Hey everybody, this is Dallas from East Texas Estate Liquidators. I want to thank everybody for tuning in this evening. We're running a little bit late. We had some technical difficulties we had to work through, but we got it handled and we are ready to go now. Um, first off, I want to thank Luis Manrios for checking out and being here tonight. And uh, I do want to thank you very much, Luis. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Dallas. All right, well, let's get started with some good old question and answer period here. Now, I know that uh, you've been doing YouTube videos for just a couple of months now. Uh, for the people who maybe don't know who you are, can you give us a little bit of your background? Yeah, I, um, I live in Kissimmee, Florida, and I've been selling Disney pins since 1999 on eBay. And it's been only two months that I started uh, watching these videos and, and buying stuff that initially I thought was junk, you know, going to Salvation Army and thrift shops. And when I started seeing these videos, I started to realize that there's money, treasures out there that can be sold for a lot of money. And it's something that I'm learning as I go by watching these videos, and I want to include that along with the Disney stuff that I sell. Now, I know you uh, sold Disney pins. I watched some of your earlier videos in the... Uh... My mother-in-law is a travel writer, and she's done a lot of uh, writing about Disney and has quite a few of those pins. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what kind of the traits and characters that maybe if we were to come across a Disney pin in, a, in an estate sale or at a thrift store that we might want to look for? Yeah, you want to look for limited edition pins because those are the ones you're gonna, they're going to have the most value. And the lower the edition, the higher you're going to get for them. So like it's, if they made uh, 5,000 uh, edition pins, that means they made 5,000 pins, and when they sold out, they sold out. As opposed to if they made 100 pins, obviously the, the, the desire to find that 100 pin, if it's a goofy pin that you're looking for and you're a collector, it's going to run out. So there's going to be a lot of people who are going to want that goofy pin, and it's not going to be available only to 100 people. So the value of that pin skyrockets. So that's something that you want to look out for. Now, I know you then, said you... Go ahead. I'm sorry, Louis. And then characters, you know, you got uh, characters that are not popular. You want to look for those characters that are not so popular. And even those, since they're not... Even if they're not a limited edition, because they're not popular, the prices on those sometimes skyrocket. When you say not popular, what kind of characters are you talking about? Like, uh, not the main character. Uh, one that comes to mind, I forget the name of that uh, uh, Disney movie. It was uh, the new king or the king's groove, something like that. So okay. that king, and he was in, um, they didn't make a lot of that pin, but it wasn't a limited edition pin. And when you see it, you know, that's going to be a pin that, you know, it's popular and, I mean, not popular, and it'll sell for a lot more. Do you sell most of your pins when you do sell them on eBay? Do those go here within the United States, or do a lot of them go international? International. They go international. And I got some right here that I, this is um the Little Mermaid. I don't know if you can see. Oh, this is Mickey. A bunch of yeah. Mickey pins. And and then they have another thing that you want to look out for because some pins are unique, like, like to the cruise. This was only sold on the Disney cruise. So if you see something, like this is the Disney Wonder, and it's a cruise uh, set. So you know that that you have to pay to get on that cruise, whoever bought this, went on that cruise, or if it's a Hong Kong pin, wherever they're unique. A lot of times Disney makes things that are unique to the different parks that they have. So if you see something that was that says Hong Kong on it or that says uh, Paris, Disney Paris, or California or Florida, you know, you're only going to get these pins in these places where they're, uh, they're selling them at. So those are is another thing that's going to have value to it. How much do you pay for those when you purchase them, like on a cruise ship or something? And what kind of value do you get out of them in the secondary market? You could get, I mean, I, they, they sell them for about $12. The little pin, box pins can go up to, a, uh, they can sell them for $25 initially. But depending on the edition size, once they sell out in that main uh, market, they can go up uh, three, four times the price that, you know, Disney was selling them. I know you talked in a little bit in one of your videos about uh, purchasing things in your local market that maybe are undervalued and selling them into a, to a wider market like on eBay or, or another online uh, type of uh, selling site. Um, what kind of successes have you found with purchasing items locally that you 
could share with us that uh, you've been successful selling them to a wider market other than the pins? Well, uh, anything Disney, basically. Like I found in a garage sale, I found a boo from Monsters Incorporated. It was a little doll. It was all beat up. And I got about three dolls for 50 cents or 75 cents. They gave me in a little bag. And I put that doll uh, on eBay, and it sold. Uh, somebody in Sweden paid me 75 bucks for that uh, that doll. So this is the market, you know, that everything here, I see a lot of Disney stuff. When I go to garage sales, Disney stuff. And you're not going to see that in somebody else's market. You're not going to have that access to that many Disney things. But you can find them, and, and when you put them out there, it, they, they go for a lot. I mean, Disney is a big – when people come to Disney, they make their memories, and they go back to their <laughs> to their homes, and they want to, you know, uh, reattach themselves to that. Whether they go to eBay – or, or Disney stores in the malls to get the stuff that they didn't get when they were down here. Me and my wife are planning a trip to Disney World in uh, probably August of this year. Do you have any suggestions of uh, places we might want to check out when we get there to Kissimmee or Orlando? As far as Disney? Or? Or it's, it's just as far as general stuff, I mean. Well, they got uh, Wonderworks and down International Drive. They got... It's like one strip where they have a bunch of different helicopter rides. Wonderworks is like an upside. I think Wonderworks is getting around uh, nationally. Yeah. I know that they have one in uh, Tennessee, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I was there last year. Yeah, that's pretty neat. And then, you know, basically what every when you come down here, it's either Universal Studios or uh, Disney, SeaWorld, uh, stuff like that. Well, that's neat. Um, now, in one of your videos, you were you kind of hit on something that I thought was very interesting, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it. And it was uh, keeping customers versus finding customers. And I think that's something that's not talked about enough in YouTube videos. And I know that you talked a little bit about using social media to to keep your customers engaged, so you can sell them more products. What kind of social media do you use currently to, to allow you to do that, and what kind of successes have you seen with that? Well, I'm getting into that right now. I hadn't used it a lot, but what I'm trying to do with Facebook, and now Google Plus is a, is a good one. You know, I'm liking it a lot. But Facebook, I usually try to get people to go there and see my new finds. It's my, it's my goal. That's what I want to do. You're going to see my finds that I get there, and then you obviously I'm going to link them back to my uh, website, so they could see the video or whatever else I'm going to talk about those finds or whatever you know whatever I want to link them to. But that's basically where I want people to get that feed is going to go lead you back to my websites. Yeah, and that kind of leads me to my next question. Um, in that same video, you're talking about professionalism and how we are uh, you know even if we don't know it, we're always in front of our own our customers here on YouTube or any other venue that we may be putting content out in and uh, being professional so that we don't turn customers away. Um, when we're out here and we're, we're doing YouTube and we're talking about picking and doing that type of stuff, do you think that a lot of our customers, when they, you know, Google East Texas Estate Liquidators or they Google Luis Manrios, do they come and look at our YouTube videos, do you think? I think it can affect. I mean, you never know who's watching. I mean, this is a worldwide Internet. You know, anybody could tune in and and get to know. We become, you know, celebrities of sorts. You know, when people are watching these uh, these videos, and everybody, you don't know what interest of people. Uh, it's, even though the, this picking market is small, it's growing, and you know, and a lot of people. I mean, even between us, I've seen people who buy things from each other, and and it can affect. I think it can affect. You know, the, what you portray to people who don't know you. You know, uh, it can affect you positively or negatively. Yeah, I think so, 100%. I mean, I know I've had customers who have, uh, I've only been doing YouTube for a month and a half or so, but I know I've had a couple of customers who purchased items from me on uh, eBay who uh, said they saw it on my Craigslist or my YouTube haul video, and that's how they, they found it. So, yeah, yeah we've we, got You want to. Uh, uh, Present yourself as an expert or whatever it is that you you uh, you're an expert in, obviously. So that goes with you know if you're going to be an expert, you need to be professional. Because I tell I'm, you know my plans is to tell people around here locally that I make these videos. Come and check it out and see what I have, what I uh, what I sell, what I, and what I'm going to get. So if they see me, you know, cutting up 
on a video or you know it might, you know and everybody's different if you want if somebody wants to uh that's the, their personality and that's what they portray and that's the way they are everywhere and that's their customers and then that's fine but to me the you know I want to have that credibility let the people know that I'm a credible person that you could come and do business with me and and we're going to you know get along or or something to that effect do you think that resellers in general get a a bad name just because of what we do it's buying yeah, merchandise i think that that's depends on society i mean if people there's people who don't want to have anything to do with second hand things so they're not no matter how you know how you present it to them or pack it up for them they're just not going to like it and then there's people but a lot of people, I think, with the economy, are going to be forced into that direction where a lot of people are going to have to buy things in the secondary market because, you know, because the economy is getting bad. Now, I know that your channel is taking a bit of a directional shift, and you're going from uh, doing haul videos and that type of stuff to more of a documentary type of uh, feel of t starting a business from the ground floor and and seeing how far you can take it and I think that's awesome I'm, I'm really excited to see you know how that goes um, I wanted to ask you real quick what where in that process do you feel you're at currently did I freeze up a little bit Are you there Luis Luis. Well, I don't know. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's get to some questions real quick, and uh, we'll see if Luis pops back in here. Um, FT ideas. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hang on, I hit the wrong button here. All right, Yogi Picker, thanks for showing up. Poker Picker, thank you for being here. And uh, we got some people who uh, came up with the right answer on the Emperor's New Groove. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Coco Army, anytime you pick up something Disney, it sits there for like four views and never sells. I stopped picking them up. Well, we'll have to ask him about that when he gets back in here. Um, let me send him another invite real quick. Alright, let's see if he gets back in here. Alright, I found it. I was waiting for the previous feed. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, we had some technical difficulties and uh, I apologize. Wheelin' Dealin' Willie 5 is here in the house. Uh, Trey Taylor, I'm new to this, to all this, and pretty selective, pretty selective so far on what I pick up. Afraid my place will look like the background of a lot of people's I watch on YouTube. Well, that kind of happens, and that's unfortunate. But uh, you know, you got to have inventory in this business. I mean, I was talking to it with one of my friends from YouTube today, and you know, you've got to have inventory because there's going to be times when you're not going to be able to find stuff and you know you're going to want to have something to to fall back on make some money no matter what is going on Alex A is in the house uh, Ed Evans is in the house uh, wheeling and dealing with five I hesitate to refer people to my videos when trying to sell because they will find out what I actually paid for things and want a better deal well I think that happens but uh, you know, people are going to find it anyways, especially if you're uh, trying to promote your business, and that's what I'm trying to do. So people people find it. Uh, what type of scanner services do you use? I currently use um, Scan Power, is the scan service I use, and I'm just using it on my phone. I'm not using the the uh, handheld unit because I just can't can't figure it out and it's never accurate it's accurate sometimes but not enough of the time uh, hello everyone I've been dealing with the same thing with Disney stuff I don't know about Disney stuff I don't sell a lot of it but uh, they're all dead does it make 40 of them 
I don't know what Yogi's talking about. California picking with the C is in the house. Reagan Profit, thanks for viewing. Uh, let me see if I can figure out what's going on with Luis. I will uh, see here. Well, he's offline. I don't know. We're just going to make this the Dallas show for right now until Luis comes back. Uh, business has been excellent. Been killing it on on uh, Amazon. Really liking Amazon. Uh, you know, something kind of that uh, Stacy said earlier today kind of, I don't want to say rubbed me the wrong way because it really didn't, but uh, made me uh, wonder what people really think of uh, what they what people really think of uh, Amazon and uh, what she said was that uh, she didn't find much success with it or didn't think that it was something that was beneficial guys I uh, I am the direct opposite of that and uh, I love Amazon now I am uh, doing big business on Amazon you know the thing about eBay is you can find a five dollar item and sell it for fifty or a hundred dollars and that's great and you know it takes time to get that item prepared to sell take pictures of it list it and everything but on Amazon you can find five dollar items that you can sell within an hour for you know fifteen or twenty dollars after fees you net you know double your money and you really didn't have to take a whole lot of time to uh, go out and uh, source inventory you don't have to worry about cleaning anything up you don't have to worry about taking any pictures you don't have to worry about uh, you know any of that stuff and it's wonderful for that type of thing I mean I'm selling a lot of different merchandise that I would normally sell on eBay on Amazon. I mean, just just today I sold a Guitar Hero. Uh, I think it was, let's see what it is. I'll pull it up here. I sold an Xbox 360 Rock Band wireless guitar used. I picked up at a Goodwill yesterday for $5.99. And I have sold it today on Amazon for $61.52. Plus shipping. Uh, you know, shipping's five bucks. I'm gonna, you know, split the difference. I'm probably gonna probably gonna cost me ten to twelve dollars to ship that item. So I'm gonna end up netting somewhere around fifty dollars for that five dollar purchase on Amazon and you know Amazon's not about books I mean everyone wants to sit here and say that Amazon is the you know that you gotta be selling books to be successful on Amazon and I just don't feel that is accurate because I am not selling a damn book on Amazon I, I do not uh, I do not care to scout books I do not care to sell books because you go to any book you you scan and it's a penny I mean nine out of ten it seems like are a penny book and the ones that aren't pennies and have ridiculous prices on them you know you go to eBay and you look up what they actually sold for and you know ten dollars and you're asking three hundred on Amazon and uh, Luis is back <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I got to get used to this thing. <laughs> it's all right. Well, let's get back to where we were at. I don't remember what we were talking about, but uh, I was just you were, going. You were asking going, me about the starting a, a picking business from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Where in that process are you now? I mean, where have you? What have you done to start your business, and uh, what are you doing to continue it? I'm selling at the flea market. I got me. A, I bought me a trailer, and I'm selling at the flea market, and. I'm gonna start uh, selling on eBay because I have another Disney eBay that I'm, I don't want to. I want to yeah. start from scratch. So I got Florida auction sales on eBay. That's where I'm gonna be putting the stuff that I find. And I'm selling. I got me a place in the flea market. That's about as far as I've gotten with that. Uh, what have been some of? Uh, have you had any real successes with uh, your picking business from the start as of yet? Well, the problem that I'm having is that since the flea market's open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that's when I want to go to the 
to the garage sales. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to, you know, I still got a lot of junk here that I'm selling. So if I don't go to buy anything else, I'll be all right. But once I start selling that stuff that I have, I have to figure out how I'm going to overcome that little hurdle. Where are you? Uh, I see all those toys behind you. Where are you selling that that merchandise? That I'm not. A lot of this I'm not selling. Uh, I just, just collectible. Like yeah, this was like retail ar arbitrage. We call it. I didn't even know it was that, but I used to buy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I used to get a lot of these things. Seven. You know, at Walmart they used to bring them down real cheap. And then I will sell them, and basically, you know, a lot of this stuff is free when you when you do the math. What I got it for, what I sold, so I got it, you know. Have you tried selling anything on Amazon as of yet? Yeah, I've been selling some books. Okay. I've sold a few books on there. I got about twenty listed on on Amazon, and and I'm selling them. I'm telling you, I've been killing it with toys on Amazon, just killing it. Toy is that and... the secret you got? <laughs> no, it's not my secret item. You're not going to know my secret item. I might tell my secret item at some point, but I after, still, it, cool, uh, after it cools off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> after no one else can make money on it. Um, what is something that you have learned since you uh, started doing your real your your resale business that you didn't think you would uh, would learn? Um. Selling on Amazon, that's one thing that, that I've learned. I've learned what to look for, like these, um, these are called Olakais. And I've seen these several times, and I learned what these were by watching the Bonafide Hustler video. And I saw this at the Salvation Armies where I saw, saw them. And they, were, they got a tag on them, 99 bucks, wow. and I got them for $20. And I'm not selling them because my daughter wants them. They're real comfortable. <laughs> So she Seems like that's a big problem in the resale business. People yeah. wanting to keep the good stuff. Yeah, and I got I got some real nice um Kathalon pans and my wife wanted those, so you know. Some what are some of the skills or attributes that uh, you think make your yourself a, a good reseller? Well that's what I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna see if I am a good reseller as far as um uh picking, you know, use things and, and doing that. So right now I'm not gonna say that I'm I'm good or, you know, I'm going to find out along with everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what people, I see if anybody left us any questions over here real quick. And uh, some of the guys were saying a little bit about uh, Disney stuff maybe being a little slower to sell on eBay. Have you seen that here lately? Yeah, the pins have gone down. So you really have to know, like I said, what pins or hot. There's a lot of pins out there that you could sell for two to three hundred dollars. You know, I've sold some for that much, and but the, by and large, you can you can hardly can't get anything from a, for a lot of the regular uh, what do they call them uh, rack pins? They call them rack pins. Yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, I, I I know very little about that, and that's was one of the reasons I was excited about to have you on here because I didn't know that there was limited edition pins and stuff like that. And that's something that, uh, like I said, my my mother in law is a travel writer, and she's been going. She's gone to Disney, I think, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen times, and uh, she always gets the goodie bags for the reporters. You know, they they give them all kinds of uh, exclusive stuff, like when they open a ride or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are good uh good things to have they have value when they get get that kind of stuff. One of the things you talked about in one of your videos that I didn't know anything about, but I checked it out after listening to your video was is it Listia? Listia? Listia is something that I wanted to incorporate I think and I think it fits in good with this. It's Listia and it's a place where you actually just uh get points. You don't get any cash. So if you're gonna if I was to list this on Listia and the reason I will use it for is if it's something that I can't sell. You know, I will put it on there and just get points for it. So maybe this pin I'm not selling it, I'm not having any luck and I'll get uh five hundred points for it. And with those five hundred points I'll go buy uh, another something else that somebody has. And, and try to sell that, you know. That's just one thing that uh, the only reason I would use that for. Uh, what are some of the things that you've you've uh, purchased on there? Maybe have you ever purchased anything, or you know, traded your points I've for traded, something got, on there that you resold? I, haven't, I don't have anything that okay. I've 
purchase, but I've sold a lot of things on it or gotten points for. I got about 13,000 points, and I've been getting points because on that video, I put a an affiliate link. So every time somebody goes in there and, and you know, and, and joins, I get 500 points. So I'm accumulating a lot of points as that. The information is free on the video, but I do have affiliates that um, I try to make some money on or points well, in this case. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Um, now, another one of your videos, you were talking about thinking outside the box and, uh, you know, how we as pickers sometimes follow the herd and when people are buying clothes and we see a bunch of clothes videos, everyone goes buys clothes and then, you know, the next thing out, you know, the next hot thing, everyone chases it like maybe Amazon now, you know, everybody's talking about Amazon, so everyone's buying Amazon stuff. Um, what is something that you've recently thought outside the box on that you've been successful with? Well, that, I made a video where I had four items that I put on the wall, and I just started, uh, I put links to the main videos where I was uh, indicating how much they're going for on eBay, and I've sold, two people have contacted me to buy those items, and I've sold two of them, and I hadn't seen anybody do something like that. Yeah, I saw that video, that was, so, that was smart. And I've sold two of them, just um, the, the other day I shipped out the little uh, a Toy Story car, and I sold it for, I think I gave it to him for 110 bucks. And they were going for a lot more than that. So if he wants to sell it on eBay and uh, make some money, he could. But it was just something that I wanted to test out, see how that that worked. So stuff like that. And I think that you have to uh, burn your own trail, blaze your whatever they however yeah. they say it. You know, uh, because this is like a guide. Like what you sell over there might not sell over here. So I use it as a guideline, and I'll try it here. And if it doesn't work, that doesn't mean that I'm a failure or that you're um, lying or you don't know what you're talking about. That means it's not working here, so I need to find out what's working here. So the way I look at all this uh, picking stuff, everybody's going to be different in each community, and I need to find out what are my strong points that sell here where I'm at. Now, where do you mostly do your picking at? Goodwills and that type Goodwill, of stuff? Goodwill, Salvation Army. Right now it's Goodwill and Salvation Army, and a couple sure. of thrift stores that are around here. What about yard sales? I know a lot of people in Florida, you know, year-round yard sales. I haven't sales. been going to a lot of yard sales uh, because I got into the uh, flea market, but, uh, you know, I love to do that. I want to do that. Now, there's, a, like I said, there's a lot of people who do uh, picking down in uh, Florida. Do, do you feel that the competition living in a larger city versus, you know, where I live, there's like 1,200 people and you know, there's not a whole lot of people who are doing what I do, so I think I, I have a little bit of an easier avenue than that. Do you think living in a big city hurts you at all for doing this? I don't think it, it will, and I don't think it does because, you know, everybody, we're not right up against each other, and I don't know who else is doing it around here. There may be a lot of people who are doing it and not making videos, but when I go to the to the Salvation Army, I see a lot of things that I think are, that I don't see on on videos but I think that they will sell yeah there's a lot of things out there that we don't see in videos that, <laughs> that make money I think that yeah. you know I mean that's the neat thing about YouTube and then what I really enjoy about it is is you know finding the things that you maybe didn't necessarily know about um, is there some things out there that you were like I can't believe people are selling that when you you know first started watching videos yeah all, mostly all that stuff to me, you know, was I found the pedal car for 14 bucks at the Salvation Army. I looked it up on eBay, and the highest one that sold was 500 bucks. <laughs> and and I can't believe, you know, I said, wow, how come people are throwing th these things away and they don't just uh, go to eBay and selling them? Yeah, I so I have one of my employees, uh, my wife's brother. He is literally dumbfounded every time we sell something because he can't believe someone would pay good money for something that uh, he thinks is does not have value so I guess it's just the mentality you gotta have I was gonna ask you about that once you hire somebody and they start realizing and their eyes open like wow I can do this on my own do you lose um, people who are working for you because they go do it on on their own or... yeah I mean you do but uh, I don't, I, you know, I have a, maybe I have a bad opinion of people, but I think most people are lazy, and when you give them a, a paycheck, 
that's you know an every week kind of thing, and they don't you know it's you know it's easy happy money with it. Yeah, they're happy with it, and uh, you know they don't their horizons are only as far as they their end of their nose, and uh, you know, and I'm sure that you know I've lost people in their you know direct competition now, but uh, it doesn't. You know that doesn't bother me. If I'm helping somebody make a living, well, more power to them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just I just wanted to know about that and living in a big city because I go to Dallas occasionally to uh, do some picking and stuff, and it's like a whole different world over there. It seems like everything's picked over, and you know you just so you don't find as you find better things at where you're at as opposed to Dallas. Yeah, I mean I. Uh, just today, I drove about a hundred and I don't know, 150, 50 miles round trip. I went uh, from my house. I live about uh, an hour or about half hour south of Longview, Texas. I don't know if you know where that is, but yeah. uh, I drove uh, from my house all the way down to Lufkin and uh, hit. They've got a Goodwill there and did some retail arbitrage and stuff, looking for some secret items and. Uh, <laughs> Then I came back up through Nacogdoches and uh, Carthage and some of the, they're not huge cities. Lufkin's about 60,000 people, but, you know, I just, I think that where I live is like perfect for me because I don't think there's a whole lot of people doing what I do. I'm familiar with those small cities in Dallas. I, I graduated from South Grand Prairie High School over there. Yeah, I graduated from Plano East. Yeah, I, I remember Plano. We played them in basketball. A lot. I was in high school. Yeah, we're we were a power back then. We're football they divided, football yeah. powerhouse too. Yeah, Along with Louisville, divide. Louisville back in the day was good too. The fighting farmers. Yep. <laughs> I like my personal favorite of any of the Dallas high schools is the Forney Jackrabbits. That is my unbelievable <laughs> favorite high school name. I uh, they're. They're on my way to Dallas, and when I go to Dallas, they have a big water tower, and it has a picture of a jackrabbit, rabbit, and it says, Forney Jackrabbits, and I always think that is just hilarious. <laughs> Bonafide Hustler said, what's up, Luis? What's up, Hustler? I Let's just shot out got. the Olakai sandals that I learned from you. It was actually his video that I saw these in. Yeah, Louis, I tell you, you know, we've got a – a lot of good pickers down here in Texas, and uh, he's definitely, I've learned a lot from him. Yeah. But uh, let's see, Luis, if you shorten your flea market hours so you can go to yard sales before and after, you could snag some good stuff to bring with you. It works for us. Who is that? How do you Chris, see the comments here? Uh, you have to go into the YouTube and open the, okay. the video. But... Uh, okay. Chris Curran, Kur I don't. I I just seen him here recently. He must be a newer guy. But that's a suggestion for you, Luis. Yeah, I was thinking about that. But they um, they want you there when I when I signed in there. They want you there, you know, constantly the whole three days. Uh, they don't want to see like booths that are not open while while the flea market's open. So I how was many, even thinking uh, of was that? How many vendors do they have there? They, uh, I really don't know. It's a big flea market. I don't know how many vendors, and I didn't ask. You know, I just yeah, just big though. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Any other good questions in here? Uh, I'm enjoying the channel and great advice. Thanks, guys. There's a lot of new pickers out here. It's just amazing. I'm seeing a lot of names I don't I don't recognize. So, I want to thank everybody for tuning in here tonight, and I appreciate all of you. Um, but uh, these new guys, I mean, they just bring a wealth of knowledge. I wish a lot of them would put out some videos so that we could learn what, you know, some of the stuff they know more than we do. Right. Uh, a lot of people are in here talking about profit margins and stuff. When you buy a uh, buy an item, Luis, what kind of profit margin do you like to try to stay around? If you know, if it, you would like to double your money, triple your money, what? Uh, triple my money is what I what I try to try to get now when say there's an item that's a five dollar item and uh, so you like to get 15 or more for that right and then it's and it's all variable man because like I said 
when I got the doll, that doll, I didn't think I was going to get 75 bucks. I was happy to get uh, 15 or 20 bucks. But you really, you know, you that's my goal. But a lot of times it can exceed or, you know. I guess it's pronounced Curon. Curon. I know his wife Roxy. How do I know his wife Roxy? I, I don't I don't know anyone named Roxy. I don't think. <laughs> but uh, let's see here. Now, when you list on eBay, I notice that you have a lot of you know excellent photos in your uh, on your website and such. How do you get such great photos? I use my uh, iPad. Do you really <laughs> take some real good pictures? <laughs> I was surprised, and I said, "I'm going to use my iPad. That's what I take pictures with." And I used, and those, a lot of those pictures are outside where the lighting is real good, and you know, and they, and they come out real nice. Now, when you uh, list, do you use the eBay mobile listing app, or how do you? No, I uh, go list? into the old, the old-fashioned way. I get in the computer and do everything. I was watching some videos where you could do it with a. Uh, with the app, I just take the picture, and it's a lot quicker. But I haven't, I haven't done that. Yeah, I, I, I use listing software, but I've been messing around with that, that mobile app, and man, that thing is slick. If you, people aren't aren't out there using that mobile app, yeah, I just heard about it the other day on a video. I don't know who made it. But I was watching a video. I think it was um, Dick Burns. Yeah, he's putting out some good videos out there too, but. Uh, that's all the questions I had for you. Do you have anything you want to ask me, Luis? No, you're just a goal that I have. I want to get to your level, be able to have a warehouse where I have a bunch of space where I could put up a bunch of things and start just pumping them out like you are. That's <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I know you talked about profit margin and stuff, and we were talking about that while you were uh, got knocked off there. But, uh, you know, I I'm a big m believer in turning and burning my money, you know. And I think Amazon is like built to turn and burn your money. I mean, you can buy stuff today for you know six or seven dollars and sell it for fifteen, you know, you know, double your money and sell it in an hour. I mean, I've got here. I'll show you this one item I bought today. I bought six of them and they've all sold already. But <laughs> and so you listen got, to today? Yeah, I listened to them today when uh -huh. I got home. When I got on with you earlier is when I was listening. <laughs> Hang on. How, how long was that? Three hours ago? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but today I bought six of these. They're just a play school uh, bus with uh, Sesame Street. And. Okay. Uh, I paid five dollars and fifty cents. They were on clearance, and I bought six of them. That's all they had, and and I sold all six for uh, sixteen dollars and forty cents plus shipping on on all six. And you know that's in what three hours? Right, right. Yeah, that's good. Let me ask you. I've only been listing uh, books on Amazon. If you're gonna buy like a toy like that and list it, does it have to have a barcode? Is that the only way you could put things on, or you could do your own uh, picture of a pin and and put it on there? Yeah, you can do your own picture and and put it on there. You just add add, add an item and uh, put it on there. It doesn't have to have a barcode, but uh, the barcode makes it super simple. But uh, yeah, because I tried back in uh, to around 2000, I tried to sell on Amazon, and they wouldn't let me sell Disney. Nothing Disney. They said that I couldn't use that. Well, I wasn't authorized to sell. Uh, yeah, I know they they have some crazy rules about about that type of stuff, and they may have changed it. Um, I tried selling on Amazon about two two and a half years ago, and then again uh, about a year ago, and it was just I couldn't. It just didn't make sense because I couldn't uh, I couldn't buy the quantities of products that I needed to buy for the small profit margins I was making on them but uh, I don't know what's happened here in the last six months or a year on Amazon but I mean it is just unbelievable if you get something with a good sales rank you know uh, the the rank that they you know yeah. the item is or whatever and uh, and the lower that rank the better it sells is yeah. that what it is yeah like this was like six thousand 
in toys on on Amazon. And like I said, I've sold six in three hours. And you know, I don't make a huge money. I mean, I'm making ten bucks after fees and everything on uh, on each one of these. But you know, all I had to do is go to the store and scan them and and fill up my cart. You know, so it's not a whole lot of work. Right, right. But uh, fast yeah, nickel, I, as they say. I, I'm a big believer. I'm telling you, a big, big believer in it. I mean, even on on eBay. I mean, I know a lot of people out there are talking about how slow eBay is, and you know how they're. You know, I'm lowering the prices till people buy them. I mean, I don't have anything hardly in this stuff, and you know, yeah, yeah. I'd love to buy something for three dollars and wait for a month or two months and get forty dollars out of it. But if I can sell it tomorrow for twenty dollars, I'm just as happy. And that's the goal that I'm I'm gonna you know follow. I want to put things out there, and if it doesn't sell, I need to get that out. I don't want to have anything sitting around here more than a month. That's something that I'm shoot shooting for. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to look like William Stoner. But he's getting on. He's getting on Amazon. He's been on Amazon a couple of weeks. Have you seen how low his his uh, hoards getting? He's selling it all on Amazon. It's all going away. Oh, good, but, good. But uh, Luis, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. I do appreciate it. I want to tell all the viewers out there who are watching right now, go subscribe to Luis Manrios if you have not already. You can check them out on uh, luismanrios.com, floridaauctionsales.com, pick to sell on Facebook, or right here on YouTube at Luis Manrios. Is that all your, That's your it. handles? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm actually yeah. changing. I don't want, because I have something else that I'm doing with Luis Manrios, and it was normally, that's what I was going to use, but I changed it okay. to pick to sell. So I'm just switching over everything. Yeah. But, but, uh, but thank you for shouting it out. No problem. I want everyone to go out there and subscribe. Let's get Luis's subscribers up because he's putting out a lot of good videos that a lot of people aren't watching because they don't know they're out there. But uh, he's got some awesome videos, and uh, it's going to be awesome to see you grow over the next few months and uh, see what you can do with this picking business with just the knowledge you're gaining on uh, Facebook. All right, man. Appreciate you having me on here. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. And uh, let's make sure we don't have any questions or anything here in the comments. Real quick. Oh, this is my sign. That oh, yeah. I yesterday one of those uh, other hangouts. They had a sign that nobody could decipher. Well, this yeah. is an easy sign to decipher. LewisManReels.com. <laughs> other than it's backwards in the video. Oh, it is backwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we can take care of that. How how's that? <laughs> there you go. But uh, I don't see anything uh, that is pressing here. Let me just – tons of comments, tons and tons of comments. What is the percentage of items you – do you guys sell? How long did it take you guys to gain true profit over all the stuff, bought versus profit on just what sold? I don't know. I sell – you know, everything I buy, I, I pretty much sell in one way or another. I mean, I'm like Luis. I, I set up at a flea market. I set up at, uh, you know, I have a warehouse sale once a year where I just blow everything out. And uh, I sell pretty much everything I get. And, you know, some stuff I lose money, some stuff I make money. But uh, at the end of the year, if it if the number is bigger than what I make than what I lose, then the government gets half of it. Uh if you sell on eBay, I try to get five to ten times my money. Crippled picker. Uh, they have fifty dollar photo kits on eBay that Renegade uses for his pictures. Yeah, I, I use a photo kit too. But Luis had some really good pictures. I wanted to see how he did it because it didn't look like uh, he was using a photo booth like I use. But they were awesome pictures. Uh, got a bunch of people posting stuff on Amazon. Um, Target seems to have issues with having signs up that will say one price and then you scan it and it's lower. About 60 packs of those little holiday Lego things for 55 cents a piece. Yeah, um, I like Target. I do a lot of retail arbitrage there, but uh, I found a couple of places that I like better. But I'm not going to tell you because it's my. <laughs> um, 
Deb's Treasure, why aren't you buying wholesale? Because Deb's Treasure, to buy wholesale, you've got to uh, have a storefront for most toy companies. And uh, I don't have a uh, brick and mortar store where people can come in. I know like Mattel and all your big toy companies want you to have a storefront. And I don't want to do that. And, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, when you're buying them on super clearance, like what we're finding out there right now is, uh, you know, cheaper than what the stores are actually selling them for or getting them for. Uh, on Amazon, you have a low rank, like 100000 a seller a month. All right, guys, I think that is everything we've got tonight. Luis, again, I appreciate it. Check out Luis Manrios over here on YouTube. Let's get his subscribers up over 200. I think he was at 157 when he started. Let's get that over 200 by tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll keep climbing. Sound good, Luis? Appreciate it, man. Thanks. All right, buddy. I appreciate you, man, and thanks, thanks for, for all your information. Me. All right, bud.